Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch and we bring you the major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. ICC prosecutor proposes to exclude US troops in Afghan war crimes probe. Amnesty urges EU to call out Saudi Arabia for human rights record. Venezuelan government and opposition continue talks. And in our video section, we go to Tunisia where protests have been taking place against the president's executive action. Protesters are calling it a coup. In our first story, in a surprise move, the International Criminal Court Chief Prosecutor Karim Khan in a statement on Monday, September 27th, said that he is seeking permission to open an investigation into alleged human rights violations and war crimes in Afghanistan. Only the fact is he is excluding the involvement of American troops. The decision to exclude American troops from the investigation has inv invited widespread criticism. Many have called it an attempt to do selective justice. According to Karim Khan, the focus of the investigation would be the Taliban and the Islamic State of Khorasan province, that is ISISK. And he plans to, in his words, deprioritize other aspects in this investigation. The move to drop the investigation against the American troops at this moment is justified on the grounds of the ICC's limited resources, according to him. Khan also claimed that such focus investigation will enhance the chances of conviction. The request has been submitted in front of the pre-trial chamber of the ICC under Article 18.2 of its statute. After gathering records for 15 years, the ICC opened an investigation into alleged war crimes in Afghanistan last year. However, it is put on hold following the claim made by the Afghanistan government or then Afghan government that it would open its own investigation into the alleged crimes. International law experts and activists have criticized the move to drop the investigation against the US troops. Vice President of Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East, Michael Bookert, called it selective justice which will make the ICC look like the tool of an empire. In our next story, international human rights organization Amnesty International has urged the European Union to call out Saudi Arabia for its dismal human rights record in sustained repression of civil liberties in their bilateral meeting on human rights that happened on Monday, September 27th. Amnesty called upon the EU to speak up for the many human rights defenders, political and women's rights activists and others in Saudi Arabia fighting for basic civil liberties. In its statement issued on Monday, Amnesty said that the EU must use this opportunity to ask tough questions of Saudi Arabian authorities on their human rights abuses and not let them whitewash their atrocious record. Amnesty also pulled up the EU for neglecting these critical rights issues in its relations with Saudi Arabia in front of other geopolitical and economic concerns. The organization said that this highlights a glaring inconsistency. Human rights groups have for years denounced the rights abuses and repression taking place in Saudi Arabia. They have repeatedly urged the international community to take action and put pressure on the government to improve the status of human rights in the country. The Human Rights Measurement Initiative has termed Saudi Arabia to be one of the world's worst rights abusers. Various death penalty watchdogs have in the past found it to be one of the world's most prolific countries in terms of using capital punishment. In our next story, the Venezuelan government and the platform of far-right opposition forces held a third round of dialogue and negotiation process in Mexico City on September 26th and 27th. This followed earlier discussions between the two groups in August and early September. These discussions had led to a historic memorandum of understanding. The meetings were slightly delayed following comments by Norway's outgoing Prime Minister on the human rights situation in Venezuela. However, further discussions saw the matter being resolved and the Venezuelan government accepting Norway's apology and its neutrality. Following the third round of talks on Monday, the Norwegian mediator reported through a joint statement that both parties had to, quote, agree to hold consultations with diverse national and international political and social actors to set up an efficient mechanism for representation. The talks were scheduled to discuss the return of institutional order in the country, particularly in judicial areas and rule of law. Following the previous two sessions, the socialist government of President Nicolas Maduro and the US-backed opposition led by Juan Guaido signed a memorandum of understanding. Opposition politician Freddy Guevara was released from prison. The far-right opposition sectors, which have been boycotting the elections for the past five years, announced that they would participate in the upcoming November 21st elections. And finally, we go to Tunisia, where protests continue against President Kais Saeed's move to appropriate more power. Last week, he declared that he could rule by decree and ignore parts of the constitution. This followed his dismissal of the Prime Minister and suspension of Parliament in July. Ever since, a number of organizations have been staging protests. We bring you a video feature from Tunisia.
that's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.